has to ask permission of God to be able to sift you. Sounds kind of scary in a way. Satan's going to come and he's going to knock the chaff off of us. It sounds kind of scary. But actually, if you consider this, it's actually one of the most comforting things written in Scripture because it says this, those who belong to Jesus Christ. Is that you today? Wave at me. Do you belong to Jesus? Okay, then you are underneath His protection, underneath His wings, underneath His care. Satan does not rule and reign in your life. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is the one who rules and reigns in your life. He is in control of your life. And in order for Satan to come and test you, he's got to go first to your Father and test and ask permission. Amazingly, we see the same thing in the book of Job, right? Do you remember the book of Job? Uh, Satan's roaming through the earth and he goes up and he comes into the very presence of God and he says, God, the only reason why Job is even serving you today is because you put a hedge of protection around him. You blessed him with children and livestock and all kinds of wealth and it's no wonder he serves you. And then he had to ask permission to be able to go and test Job. And uh, so we have to understand that it's, we are God's children, right? We are his sons and his daughters, and he's got to ask permission. Now, I, I, I would not give any of you here today permission to test my children beyond what they could handle, okay? Now, my kids are all grown up, all right? So I'm going to use Jose and Cynthia's kids today, all right? Because I love those kids, right? But can you imagine if somebody came up to Miss Cynthia, Mrs. Cynthia, and said to her, you know, Edder, he's seven now. It's time that we test him. I've got a Lamborghini over here, and we're going to take him, and we're going to just put him to drive on Interstate 10 in this Lamborghini. You th How many of you think Cynthia's going to say, okay, yeah, go ahead, let him. She's going to say, what you talking about? That's my son. You're not going to do that. He's not ready for that. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, our kids get tested at school, right? It's because the teachers, is it because the teachers are mean? No. It's because that they can see by their own grades that they're making progress or not. But how many of you realize that if, if one of the teachers came and, 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 and gave a first grader a test about calculus, and then when the child couldn't complete it, they started making fun, how many of you would have a problem with that teacher? Am I right? Okay, so, so what I'm saying to you is that God is not going to give the devil, Satan, permission to try you and test you unless he thinks you're ready for it. Am I right? Oh, yeah. you got to look at this from a different perspective. Some of you are going to get this in just a minute. If you came to church today and you were saying, man, it just seems like the enemy's really fighting me this week. It just seems like I feel like I'm under attack. You know something? It may be true. It, it could be happening. But let me just say this. If it is true, then what's happened is that the enemy has had to run into the presence of God and ask God permission to test you and try you, and he thinks enough of you where he says, you know something, you just go right ahead. Because you know something, that believer of mine down there, that son, that daughter of mine, they're strong. They're not going to give in to this thing. They have the capacity to win. They have the capacity to pass the test. God said, God, and, 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 and we've got to believe that. It makes all of the difference. So the next time that person at work, you know the one I'm talking about? The one that drives you crazy, the one that's always bothersome, the next time they come into your office and they sit down and you're feeling like, oh God, I just can't handle this anymore. You have got to tell yourself, uh-uh, the enemy has went to God and he has said, can I have permission to try this believer? And the Lord says, you're big enough, you're strong enough, you can handle it, it's going to be all right. Come on, how many of you hear what I'm saying today? We've got to trust in the Lord. We've got to believe him. And, and 
And no matter what comes into your life, relationally, economically, socially, with your kids, with your mom and dad, listen to me. Don't listen to the devil because the devil's going to tell you you can't handle it. You listen to the Lord because the very fact that you're being tested and tried means that God has a powerful belief in you and that you're going to make it through. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand of praise today. Amen. How incredible is the Father's belief in us? We have a Heavenly Father who's all wise and all knowing and who loves us with an everlasting love and He would never allow anything to come my way or your way that you could not handle or deal with it. That's why we've got to have that attitude. I count it all joy when trials come my way because I know it's going to produce in me a maturity. You see, the saddest thing in the world is when a parent are, is so overprotective of their child that don't let them out into the real world. That actually happened in Ohio a few years ago. They found some kids that had never been outside the house. Born in that house, raised, those kids were so socially inept, they couldn't even talk right. They couldn't even speak right. Their maturity had been stunted because their parents left a hedge around them. And I'm going to tell you something. God is not going to do that for you because, you see, His purpose in you is that you would stand strong, that you would be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, that you would be an overcomer, that you would be more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody. I'm just telling you that it's a real thing today that the enemy can't try you or test you without going to get permission from the Lord and then the third thing that's real are you ready for the this this is, I mean if you were shouting a minute ago you better get ready to praise God right now because this is real I'm talking to you about, about reality right reality is that when you're being sifted Jesus Christ is praying for you Jesus is praying for you isn't that what he told Peter he said, Peter, I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. You see, in everything that you go through, uh, there, Satan has an objective and God has an objective. Satan's objective is that your faith would fail, that you would give up, that you would quit, that you would stop serving the Lord, that you would throw in the towel. But God's goal is that you would stand strong. Come on. God's goal is that you might become strong in Him. And I want to just declare to you today on the authority of God's Word that Jesus Christ is interceding and he's praying for you especially my friend if you're being sifted and tested if God is working in your life and that's part of that process Romans chapter 8 and verse 34 says this Christ Jesus who died more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Oh, you missed a great place to say amen. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 says, Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. I'm just here today to tell you that it's your darkest hour when it seems like everything's crumbling, when you're wondering why is this happening to me, when it seems like I, I'm being tested, when it seems like I'm being you're being tried, you can understand one thing that your elder brother by the name of Jesus is before the Father and he's praying for you. And I'm telling you his prayer works. You say, well, how does he pray, Pastor? He does not pray that the test will be removed. Tell me you ever done that. I've done that. Lord, I've had enough of this. Sometimes he just smiles at those prayers, right? How many of you sometimes say, Lord, deliver me? We should pray, Lord, help us to stand. John chapter 17, Jesus prayed for his disciples. And this is what he said. My prayer is not that you would take them out of the world but that you would protect them from the evil one. You see, the evil one's goal is to destroy your faith. The evil one's goal is to bring you down. That's why Paul wrote to the Ephesians, because he knew that people all over the world were going to be sifted. And this is what he says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against 
against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, that day when you get tested, that day when you get sifted, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Maybe there's somebody here and you say, man, I just feel like this. I've got my shield of faith out in front of me. I got my word by my side, the sword of the Spirit. And it says, I just can't seem to move forward. I can't seem to move back, but at least I'm still standing. Is there anybody like that? You know, the devil just hates what I call star-spangled banner Christianity. Let me tell you what I mean by that. You know the author of the Star Spangled Banner. You know what he saw? He saw the American flag, and it was in the middle of the fight, right? It was in the middle of the struggle. He said the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. And let me tell you something. I believe that the enemy is throwing those fiery darts at us, as the Scripture says. He's throwing them all the time. He's asked permission of God to try us. And there we are. we got our shield of faith. And if we peek our head around the corner, it's all full of fiery darts. Am I right? And the enemy sees through those fiery darts and he, and he sees us standing there. And this is what he says. Oh no, they're still standing they're not giving up they're not backing up they're moving on come on I'm talking about star spangled banner Christianity when the world sees and the devil sees that we're not going to slow down we're going to continue on come on Dave Reaver was on fire for God. He was known amongst his army platoon in Vietnam as Preacher Dave, and he stood for the Lord. Until one day a phosphorus grenade went off just a couple of feet from him, burning most of his body, disfiguring him for life. And I'm telling you that, 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 that I've heard him tell this story of how he fell down into a, 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 a place where there was just a whole lot of water, and he was wondering, am I going to die? What's going to happen to me? But let me tell you, in the in the spiritual world Jesus the intercessor was by the Father come on and he was praying for David Reaver and David Reaver said oh, my faith is not going to fail and he literally came up out of that water and he raised his hand his face is on fire he's suffering and he said this I still believe in you God come on somebody I'm just here today to tell you that you can stand up and you can believe in the Lord no matter what's going on in your life those of you who've known me a long time know that Stanford, Texas, when I pastored there, was I went through all those stages, all right? I, I went through the preparation stage. I, I saw the harvest, the blessing stage, and, and I went through the sifting stage, and it was a bit painful for me because there was a lot inside of me that the Lord had to remove off of me. Do I have any witnesses in the house? Come on. They say, oh, yeah, I've been there. I've had some stuff that the Lord has had to remove off of me, some chaff off of me. Let me tell you what I did. Years later, I went back through Stanford, Texas as a missionary. I was out in that part of the world, and I pulled right up in there, right between that parsonage where I lived and that church where I pastored. It was 1.30 in the morning. I got out of my car, and I stood there, and I told the devil, you know something? I'm still standing. <laughs> I'm still standing. Come on. I still believe. My faith did not fail. You did not take me out. You did not win. I'm still standing. Come on. Is there anybody that today that that's going to be your testimony as life continues on? There's Yes, you're in it right now. Yes, you feel it right now. Yes, you feel the heat right now. Yes, you just think, oh, I'd like to put this, this shield of faith down for a moment, but you dare not be because you know one thing, the enemy's not done hurling his fiery darts. But, the, but let me tell you something, the word says this, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Come on, because you're going to keep on standing. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 12 tells us that the best thing we can do is to pray for one another when we're being sifted. Right? He 
He talks about a prayer warrior by the name of Epaphras. He says this, Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He always, he is always wrestling in prayer for you that you may be able to stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. My father-in-law, before he passed away, was a wonderful man of prayer. And I've sat at his table and I've listened to him call out all of his grandchildren in prayer. He never ever prayed, Lord, keep them from all the tests and trials of life. But he always prayed, Lord, just give them the faith to be able to stand. I know some of you are thinking, well, Pastor Bob, didn't Peter fail the test? Interesting question, right? Didn't he fail the test? The Lord said, I'm going to pray for you. Satan's desire to sift you like wheat. And you know what? Peter went out there in his own confidence, thinking, I've got this. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go all the way with the Lord. And as soon as that little gal, that damsel, you've heard the story, right? The damsel said, hey, he's one of them. That's one of those Nazarenes. I, I saw him with Jesus. Peter started denying the Lord. He did that. And then all of a sudden, the rooster crowed. And let me just pick up the story right here in Luke 22. It says, Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. Can you imagine how Peter felt? The Lord looked straight at Peter. Man. You ever felt like the Lord's been looking right at you? You know, I've heard preachers say it was such a condemning look. The Lord was angry. Uh, you know, I don't believe that at all. I believe there was love. I believe there was compassion. I believe there was grace. I believe there was healing in his eyes. I believe there was restoration. You know, a, a one little look can tell you a lot, right? And, and it, but it had a great effect upon Peter. And even though Peter had failed, the scripture says he went outside and he wept bitterly. And I don't know, somehow those tears caused all that chaff to go away. And the Lord Jesus Christ restored Peter. He took that one who had failed and he said, you know something, I'm going to make this man over here who yes he yeah he had that weakness he was like a reed in that moment but I'm going to make him a rock today I'm going to give him the power of the Holy Spirit he's going to preach on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 believers are going to be saved come on maybe that's you today maybe you feel like man the Lord's looking at me and I've failed listen stand up get up keep going amen let the tears come because the chaff is going to go off one way or another because God has you in this powerful process of being sifted. And then let me give you the fourth thing, and this is the real as well. Once you go through the process, you become mature, right? You start with preparation. You start with being blessed. You go through the sifting. You become the maturation. The scripture tells us this, that we will be able to strengthen others. That's what Jesus told Peter. Even though he even failed the test. He, Jesus knew he was going to fail. He said, and when you've turned back, when you've turned back, strengthen your brothers. You'll never be able to strengthen others until you have been sifted. Am I right? You'll never be able to give your testimony and touch somebody else's heart until you've been through it yourself. And if your heart's desire is to be able to touch others and bring them along with you, then you've got to understand that God's going to put you through the sifter. Hello? He's going he's to take the stuff off of you. He's going he's to help you through that. That's why you, you learn. That's how you learn how to stand. Am I right? And so... That's the power, really, with programs like we have on Friday night, the Celebrate Recovery 12-step uh, ministry that we have going on there. Because somebody who's already been through it, somebody who's already conquered it, somebody who's already had the chaff knocked off of them, come on, they can help the person who's just now coming into it. Are you with me today? The guy who's been sober for two years, hasn't used cocaine for a long time, he knows how to help that, yeah, that person who's trying to get off of it. Amen? The guy who, who just went through a divorce and he knows what it feels like and the pain of all of that, he can help that brother to say, look man, we're going to come along beside you and we're going to strengthen you and you're going to, no, your faith is not going to fail. You're going to go on for Jesus. Come on somebody. You'll be able to strengthen others. So many times we ask ourselves, why am I going through all of this? 
Have you ever asked yourself that? Why among everybody that I know, in all of my whole group of friends, I'm the only one that's going through. You, I mean, you, the, the enemy's telling, selling you a bill of goods. You're not the only one. We all go through stuff, right? But let me tell you what happens. You're going to go through it, but you're going to come out of it. Because Peter said it was just for a little while. Tell your neighbor it's only going to last for a little while. And at the end, guess who you're going to be? Strong, mature, complete, full of faith, knowing how to help others, knowing how to strengthen others, knowing that you have trusted in God and He's helped you see your way through. Would you stand with me today?